Plus, the possibilities and perils of artificial intelligence are discussed at a summit in Paris this week. Here in Australia, scientists have developed an AI tool to classify skulls. It's faster and more accurate than human assessors. And they say this will be particularly useful in situations where large populations need to be identified. Mass casualty events like a plane crash or the discovery of mass graves. Dr Jason Dowling is the study co-author and joins us now to talk more about this. Uh, Dr Dowling, can you tell us firstly why is such a tool so important, regardless of whether it is a human assessor or an AI tool? Yeah, hi Gemma, thanks for having me. Um, so after natural disasters or other tragic events, um, identifying victims quickly and accurately is crucial. Um, so our software streamlines this process, providing highly efficient and precise identification of deceased people from their skulls. And what sets our solution apart is that it's, it's specifically trained on a Southeast Asian population, so an Indonesian uh, population, which ensures greater accuracy and cultural relevance in this region. So tell us about those gains you've had in accuracy and, and how much faster you see the results using the AI tool that you've developed. Right, so the tool um, is capable of analysing CT scans of human skulls to estimate biological sex with 97% accuracy, which outperforms human observers um, who typically have around 80, low 80% 80 um, accuracy. So the software reduces human bias and also improves reliability across diverse uh, populations. So it uses the information that you've fed to it, of course, but when it it started pivoting in terms of where it thought the better clues were to identify a skull. Can you tell us uh, what it was looking at and, and that process? Sure. So we've collaborated with University of Western Australia. There's an excellent forensic anthropology group um, there who provided the, um, the training data and also the images which have, have come from Indonesia. Um, so we've used a set of five manual traits that are commonly used for assessing skulls um, in, in the field by anthropologists. We also uh, analysed the skulls just using the CT data alone and we found that two of the traits were still important that were from the um, Walker traits, the, the common scoring method, but there were three traits that weren't as important and in addition the AI learnt new features from the skulls uh, including global features like um, the size of the skull but other individual features as well within the skull which human observers haven't used in the past. As you said, you were able to make some gains there using uh, Indonesian uh, populations there. Are there other gaps in ethnicities where you know, the, the results are not as accurate? Yes, I believe so. So the Walker traits were trained on a, a North American population. Um, so I think there's, um, there's definitely scope for improving the um, generalizability of this tool across different populations globally as well. And so what next for the AI tool? What will you be focusing on and how will you go about that, both in the method but also the money in order to do that? Right. Um, so AI tools need to be validated carefully and there's still a need for human in the loop during that validation. Um, so we'll still be collaborating with our partners at University of West Australia, but we'd love to develop the tool further um, with other partners, um, uh, commercial partners, or, or to increase the impact of the science that we've we've done here. Um, we'd also like to extend the tool to other um, anatomical locations if possible as well to help with forensic investigations in the future.